to be speaking to an empty room. How many of you are here because I promised to mention Docker in the talk? All right. Uh, <laughs> there, I've mentioned it. Uh, no, uh, I actually will mention it later more, too. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Matthew Miller. I've been involved in Fedora for a long time, uh, about 10 years. I just looked. My first post on Fedora Devel was January 30th, 2004. Uh, so that's almost exactly 10 years for the Devel side of things. I've been using it since the very beginning, um, which gives me a couple more months on that. Um, and I've been working for Red Hat for a year and a half or so at this point, and a lot of it on talking about uh, what the future of Fedora is going to be, not necessarily defining it myself, but helping to put together an overall definition of things. Um, and I wanted to start with this. There's, I've heard a, a little bit of worry that uh, this whole plan is kind of coming out of an uh, outsider perception that Fedora really is kind of sucks and that it, um, it needs to all be changed and everything thrown out and rebuilt from scratch. Uh, that's not the case. Fedora is, in fact, awesome. And uh, there are a lot of awesome things about it. We have a very positive brand. If I go to a conference and talk about Fedora, obviously people have complaints about specific things. But over, in general, perception is very positive. People say a lot of nice things. We have a strong user and developer community. A lot of you here are part of the developer side of things and users as well. Um, people are using Fedora for production for all sorts of crazy things in the real world. Again, the conferences when I talk to people about what they're using Fedora for, I'm always impressed with uh, people's ingenuity and the things that they are doing. Um, we've had 10 successful years. I've got the t-shirt. A lot of you have the t-shirt. Uh, and uh, so the Fedora 20 release got a lot of positive press. It came out very quickly, but is a very solid release. If you're still on Fedora 19 or 18, I encourage you to update because it's basically just better across the board and uh, is going to be a nice solid release for a while. Um, so if that's the case, why are we doing anything at all? Why don't we just keep going along in the same way? So there are a number of reasons. Um, one of them is to sort of look outside of our little box of what we're doing in Fedora to the rest of the world. I just saw there are 10 million repos on GitHub. Uh, even if we go with the rule that 90% of everything is crap, that's still a very large number and much, much larger than the 14,000 package or so we have in Fedora. Uh, there's no way we could possibly uh, capture all of that, and that's just a lot of developer energy that's going on in a space that we're uh, not playing in. Um, as part of that, uh, the base OS, which basically, and we've got a lot of packages on top of what might be considered a base OS, but the thing we're doing in Fedora is kind of considered boring out in the world. I was at a large cloud conference a while ago, and almost nobody was using Fedora, and so I asked people, why did you choose the distribution you're building your stuff on, and what, you know, why, why didn't you choose Fedora? And almost universally, the answer wasn't, what I'm using is great. The answer was, oh, I don't care. I just picked this, and that's what I'm using, and it's fine. And like that layer is just something that's not interesting to a lot of people in a space where there is actually a lot of excitement. Uh, so that's a kind of a change, because it used to be that we could you know, very easily pack a room by mentioning Fedora at some conference and it fill it up. And now you have to talk about Docker in order to fill the room. Things are, the excitement's gone somewhere else. Um, and as part of that, there's sort of a balance between the effort and reward for working on that low level of the distribution. It used to be that if you had open source software and you could convince the distros to get that stuff packaged up, that's how you knew you'd arrive. So you get your uh, uh, thing you know, into Red Hat Linux or into Slackware, or wow, you were, you were really something, not just some little project off on the side. And that's really not the case anymore. A lot of developers uh, don't really see it as important. Maybe it is still important, but it's not seen that way. And so uh, the, the effort people are willing to put into getting into the distro is much lower. Um, and again, this is just a question. It's not an answer at this point. Got some answers coming up, hopefully. Um, and one of the things that is really interesting, so there was a talk here um, that was at Vostem from Donnie Burkholz of Gen2, and he works for an uh, analyst firm. And I have a link to it. I want to post the link to these slides. But actually, there is no audio captured, so it's actually completely useless. You can see him standing up there. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah, his, the, so the title of the talk was Distribution Level Package Management, Is It Obsolete? 
and um, you know the, the rhetorical questions. In this case, the answer is kind of yeah, it might be. Uh, so that was interesting. And but uh, I, I recommend finding the slides that talk, or maybe the audio will be fixed at some point. It's very interesting. But one of the points, this last one here, that I thought was particularly worth noting. Um, one of the things we kind of often wring our hands about in Fedora is a decline in overall popularity. And you look at the Google trends for you know, Fedora, and it's going down, and all of these things. I'm like, uh, are we doing something wrong? Has Ubuntu stolen all of our users? And actually, um, all of the major distributions that work in the kind of the way that Fedora is are on the decline. So. Um, OpenSUSE and Slackware peaked before Fedora. Uh, OpenSUSE and Fedora probably peaked in like just um, sort of the buzz popularity measure, like 2006, 2007. Um, but Ubuntu has the same peak at like 2009. So if I count the years here, th that they've been on the decline for a long time. So they're still very popular, obviously, but they're not cool anymore. None of us are cool anymore. Uh, so we want to be cool. How, how can we do that? Um, so, and just, um, I'm going to throw up some other things. This is, look, I'm mentioning Docker again. The world's changed. There's all these things that are different from the way things were 10 years ago. And so we need to react to that in some way. Um, so, um, what exactly is Fedora Next? Basically, it's a big umbrella term that's full of hand waving. It uh, means that we're kind of trying to plan our direction, look at where we're going, rather than just walking straight ahead and hoping that the direction we're going is useful to somebody. We want to look and say what's going on. There's no secret backroom agenda to all of this. We want Fedora to succeed. I work for Red Hat. Red Hat wants Fedora to succeed. That's pretty much the agenda here. Um, and some of us have been working on it for a while, but it's not in set in stone. It's open to contributions from everybody, and we want to hear, you know, things that you see out in the world that aren't reflected in what I'm talking about, and things that we're not doing that could solve those things. I'd love to hear about those. And so we're actually having a panel discussion after this. Bring your ideas to that, and it'll be great. Uh, another thing I want to start talking about is that this is not an immediate, like, if we don't flip everything over by Fedora 21, it's failed. Um, it's going to take a while, and so we're going to plan out the roadmap for this, and that's actually what's happening in the next month or so, is sort of making that roadmap for the next couple of releases and figuring out what we're doing. And I'm really big into the idea of incremental improvement. Uh, as long as we are going forward and have a plan and we're making some difference each release, that's a good thing. We don't necessarily have to do everything as the new thing or else it's failed um, every time. Um, for example, uh, removing SendMail from the uh, default install. I'm happy to get SendMail out of there. I think it doesn't belong in the default install in a lot of cases. But if it takes us two or three releases to remove it, eh, it's OK. We haven't failed. It wasn't really hurting all that much. It's just kind of annoying to have it there. Uh, so those kind of incremental improvements are a thing I'm really in favor of. Um, so this is Fedora's mission. Uh, did anybody know that this is Fedora's mission? Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's very broad. So the original Fedora project was tasked with making a open source Linux distribution. That was basically the mission. And so there was some soul searching. Fedora loves soul searching. That's part of who we are. Uh, about, again, four years ago, about, you know, what, what should we do? We, we've really, you know, even, even four or five years ago, people felt like we were doing a pretty good job of that distro part and wanted to know, like, is that all we should, be, should we be doing? Should we be doing more? And so this is, you know, the mission that was developed there. Um, and it's a pretty, it's, a, it's kind of broad, maybe it's a little bit too broad, but it's ambitious. And so the question is, you know, if that's our mission, and there hasn't been any talk of changing it, uh, so that, uh, how are we really positioned to do that? And are the things we are doing actually going towards the thing we say we want to aim for? Uh, so uh, that's part of what Fedora Next is, to look at our mission and say, okay, what more do we need to be doing to make this happen? Uh, another point. Uh, is that this is supposed to be additive. It's not restrictive. We're not saying you can't do things in Fedora anymore, but we're saying we want to add some things to uh, make that mission come true that weren't necessarily there before. Uh, we do some things that very well, and what else can we do? And how can we do what we're doing in a better way by sort of changing our focus and our processes as well? Um, because ideally, um, even though people think that base OS is boring, it's really not done. There's a lot of innovation to be done at that level as well, um, the core OS thing that Colin talked about is a really huge thing that um, is an example of something we might want to look at in Fedora. Um, and then we've got a lot of process automation things to make our uh, self better in the core level as well that could happen. 
Um, I'm just going to throw out a bunch more questions here because there are a lot of, so again, you know, why are we doing this? Um, it's happened uh, partly as part of that previous soul searching. The idea was that the default offering for Fedora would be a desktop OS. And that seemed like a good idea. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, but uh, Fedora has traditionally had a lot of like a sysadmin audience and people who are you know, installing RHEL and those kind of things. And they've got Fedora on their desktop. They've got Fedora on servers. And increasingly, with the default offering being the desktop, those people kind of felt like their role in Fedora was limited to saying, no, wait, you're breaking things. Stop it. And so uh, if you're a sysadmin who's been active in Fedora, you kind of got in this position where your job is to keep the desktop from breaking Fedora yet again. And so that kind of ends up being kind of a negative cycle. So part of the things we want to solve in Fedora Next is giving a positive voice for people who are using Fedora in server roles or are using you know, RHEL in server roles and are concerned about Fedora's direction there. Um, and want to give them a positive voice rather than saying, your job is to be the stop energy um, because, you know, People can be good and loud at being stop energy, and we'd rather than be focus all that energy into a positive direction. Uh, another thing is, you know, uh, RHEL, and this is where the conspiracy comes into it, but there's really no conspiracy. We're part of an ecosystem. We have some really big stakeholders in our downstream distribution, and we benefit a lot from doing things that the downstreams need, so that when we do things that are useful to you know, RHEL and to CentOS, uh, then it feeds back and they pay for sending a lot of people to conferences, they pay for development on things, and so that's pretty cool. Uh, and also those downstream distributions are you know, seeing the same change in the world, and so if we can change in a way that is helpful to them, we all win. So uh, increasing that and making it more obvious seemed like a good thing to do. Again, um, there's this general trend towards the base being boring. How do we respond to that? Um, I think I've talked about that one enough. Uh, another thing that's related is the difficulty in building things on top of Fedora. Fedora moves so fast and is kind of ill-defined. So basically, the only way to participate in Fedora is to make sure your stuff is polished so it will fit into the Fedora distribution as it stands. Um, no one has ever been able to really successfully make stuff that goes on top of Fedora and keeps up. So can we make that easier in some way? Um, that, I think that would be nice for a lot of things. Uh, and again, Docker fits in right here, Docker mentioned. Um, another, another thing that people notice is our, our um, barriers to entry um, is maybe the wrong place to do a lot of things. Our package review process really, really makes you go over a very tall wall to get into Fedora. Uh, but once you're over that wall, um, unless somebody notices, you can do any horrible things to your package. So we've got a lot of packages in Fedora that initially, they, when they went through that initial polishing phase, they were pretty good. But um, then, you know, the upstream updated or the packager changed something, and now they're completely out of compliance with our guidelines. And we don't even have a good measure of what is out of compliance or what the things, because we don't look at the stuff very much, except for a QA does a really good job making sure that it installs every six months. And again, we look at it when things come in. So um, maybe we're kind of putting some of those things in the wrong place. Maybe we could do a better job by letting uh, people put their packages in to some level in an easier way, and then after they're included in the project, look at improving them across the board. Um, and maybe also focusing more on you know, which packages does it really matter that they're packaged well and which ones you're like, yeah, all right, that's probably going to be crap forever and here we'll make it as useful as we can to people. Um, and then a, another thing related to that is this question of you know, how can we move fast while still um, keeping a handle on what direction we're going, uh, balancing innovation with change management, and that's always a struggle for everything, but maybe we can make it easier in some way. Um, so this is, that was some of the questions. Here's some of the basically proposed answers, and at this point, um, these are some of the answers that we are, look like we're going forward with. So um, I'm going to try and talk about you know, what these things are, very briefly at least, and then connect them into the why we're doing it uh, as best I can here. So this is something basically that I, pro that I took to Flock last summer, uh, Fedora Rings approach, and I had a diagram with circles, which I um, should have put here but didn't, but you can imagine things in circles. It's really not very complicated. And the idea is that we have a central core, which is sort of the base design, and we kind of work on actually developing, you know, what, here's what the API for this is, this is what it means to have the core of Fedora installed. And then we have a ring out from that where we have you know, different programming environments. This is, I'm, I'm coming to this a little bit, especially from the initial proposal from this cloud uh, 
viewpoint where I'm talking to developers and saying, you know, what, what do you really want out of an operating system? They want that base to be boring, but they'd like to have exciting things on top of the base. And if we can provide the exciting things rather than making everybody drag along their own custom brood thing, then we're actually providing a service to the world. So that's part of the idea here. And then uh, in the future, it would be nice to ha be able to say, okay, we can just plop down applications that use all of these services we've provided, and it is a nice seamless user experience there. And again, that's uh, you know, probably on the desktop, the Linux apps proposal plays into that, and we'll see where all that goes. Some of the infrastructure is being put down with KD bus and all of those things. So that'll be neat, and maybe it'll end up being integrated with Docker, or maybe there'll be different solutions. We'll see, it'd be kind of nice if our container approaches kind of are in the same space because a lot of the problems are the same. I can talk about that, like it's a whole other talk. But um, yeah. So why, why um, this particular thing? This kind of helps to deal with the innovation versus change. Uh, if we have a base design and an API where we are kind of rigid about how we change it, it doesn't mean we can't change fast, but we want to make sure that it's being done in a controlled, planned way rather than just everything falling into it. Um, and then you can have you know, different layers that kind of move at a different speed, even if they're rebuilt together, they're, basically their API promises can move at a different pace than the base. Um, also, this can reduce the barriers to entry. We can have things that are outside of that core where we can again say, it's ugly, fine, we can include it a little bit. Uh, and again, make it easier to be on Fedora without being in the base distribution. And I wanna be careful about saying in Fedora because one of the things that, a, the Fedora project is bigger than the Fedora distribution, and we call both of them Fedora, so that sometimes is confusing. A lot of the things I'm talking about are Fedora project, and not necessarily changes to what is the distribution itself, although since that's our main thing, that's what most of the changes affect. Um, those last two points are really the same point, I just wrote them in different words, so th there it is. Uh, um, so another proposal um, is from Stephen Gallagher, also to Flock, um, is this idea of three products. Uh, basically, these are three directions that we've seen the distribution pulled, and so we thought it might be nice to actually make a split there and market these three things in different ways. The so Fedora workstation or uh, client desktop kind of thing uh, with a specific focus. Uh, Fedora server and, of course, the shiny new Fedora cloud thing. Um, so why? Again, um, this gives a voice for the server people who had you know, really nowhere to talk in Fedora before except for being negative. Um, it gives a focus for the workstation because before, while the desktop was supposed to be the default offering, um, they were also kept being pulled you know, towards these other roles that Fedora needed to serve. And so if we can say, you know what, the desktop, that's actually supposed to be a desktop. Um, it can make, make these questions like, is SendMail supposed to be installed? Um, the answer is more obvious, and there was a thing a little while ago with uh, some of the storage-related things, where this kind of enterprise storage stuff being pushed, yeah, um, and the desktop people said, "Okay, well, we don't. It, it, this storage is like the hardest thing when installing and setting up a system. So maybe we could just leave some of this confusing stuff out, uh, and then um, that would be easier for our users." And then um, people who are using Fedora for other things are like, wait, you can't leave that out, that's really essential to us. Um, so if we can have places where the complicated storage fits and where a nice user experience fits and like, okay, oh, there's a reason this is here, but if I wanted the other thing, I can find it over here, obviously. So having a split makes things like that easier. And then uh, for the cloud, again, I, you know, um, one of the reasons Fedora isn't very popular in the cloud isn't that it isn't good for it. The Fedora cloud image I have worked on for a while and I'm very proud of it. It's great, um, but uh, why would you use that instead of one of the other cloud images? Unless you're big into Fedora, there's really no exciting reason to pick it. Uh, and meanwhile, there are things like CoreOS happening out there which are kind of exciting, and we would like to be able to be exciting too um, and so having a separate product kind of lets us uh, take that away from you know, maybe what's going on in the mainstream Fedora release and say experiment with some more radical things. Maybe we'll have OS tree in Fedora Cloud first because that's kind of a use space where it makes more sense than it might for traditional server. Um, although I know that the ambition is to make it happen and be useful for everywhere. Um, so I don't know if you can see these pictures very well here. I've got, uh, so this, this is, I'm, I'm switching topics really quickly here to one of the um, things I sort of noticed in community discussions about what Fedora is. And traditionally what Fedora is, is we take all of the raw plastic of the 
uh, software out there in the universe, and we make it into really nicely, precisely aligned Lego bricks that we can plug together in whatever way. And we give you, here, here are your bricks. It's Fedora. Right, we made these bricks pretty. Put them together however you want. Uh, another approach in operating system design is Playmobil over here, which is basically a playset. You buy it, and it's a castle with a knight, and that's what you get. But you can take it out of the box and start playing with it right away. So uh, a lot of people feel like there's a tension between here's our bricks versus here's the you know, Playmobil set, and they're worried that basically what we're saying with Fedora products is that we're going to take away your bricks and give you a Playmobil set, and if you didn't like it, too bad for you. Um, so I'm hoping, actually, that we're doing something different. We're giving people some Lego sets. Um, these are ones that are classics from my childhood, maybe your childhood, too. Uh, Lego sets are actually prettier now today than this, but these are, uh, yeah, right, exactly. This is, uh, I don't know if anybody else had this spaceship, but it was awesome. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, and so the idea is we can uh, take some of those bricks, we can ship them in sets, maybe we'll even, unlike Lego, ship them pre-assembled for you, but um, you're still, we're not taking away your bucket of bricks, you can still build other things, we want you to build other things, if you have other sets, um, that would be cool, um, and if you want to take apart these and reassemble them into something else, that's fine, although um, it should be clear, okay, you no longer have the spaceship, you've rebuilt it into some sort of you know, mining complex or whatever you also want to make. Um, so that's, this point is kind of detached from the flow of my deck, but I wanted to put it in here because I think it's kind of an important thing to, to uh, make clear in the conversation. Um, and then there's some more why, because people, again, keep asking, why are you doing this? Um, these are some things that we want to address with these products, and um, again, I don't think there's anything really, really controversial here. Um, the last point, again, is more conspiracy, because I've gone and mentioned RHEL again. Uh, one of the things is, is, uh, is just simply you know, acknowledging Fedora's, one of its important roles is a RHEL comes out of it, and it's pretty important for Red Hat that that keep working. So I think that just talking about that in an open way is better. It's not saying that um, RHEL is, you know, Red Hat is going to take super control over Fedora and steer it in a way that they haven't before, but um, just talking about, you know, this is what we need um, will really help the conversation, I think. Um, I'm talking fast. I'm running out of slides. That, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> More time for questions, exactly. Uh, so this is the governance structure we've set up for these different products and the rings things. And um, I come from a background where we love um, talking in consensus communities. So um, that's how we kind of set this up here with um, working groups for each of these things. So we've created five new committees, basically, which then has everybody putting their faces like this. Uh, but the idea is it, uh, this kind of came out of working in the cloud SIG. So f I don't know. Um, are people familiar with the idea of SIGs in Fedora? Uh, basically, a SIG is, uh, is a very lightweight construct where you say, I want to have a SIG. You make a wiki page for it. Maybe you, maybe you make a mailing list. Maybe you don't. And there, you've got a SIG. And that's a pretty good flexible structure for doing open source. Um, like Apple, for example, actually went from having a formal um, board and so on to just being a SIG because it works pretty well for a lot of things. Uh, but the other thing that can happen with that is it's really easy for it to sort of drift out of maintenance and for there to be nobody who feels responsibility for it. Um, in Fedora Cloud, it ended up with me doing all of the work as much as I tried to call for volunteers. And people would show up and do things, and then they'd kind of drift out again. And people didn't quite feel like where they could fit into the ownership of that. So the idea for the working groups was to actually basically have some active groups where we you know, called for volunteers, got uh, nominations, and then assembled, you know, okay, you're going to be the voting people on when there are voting decisions to be made, we'll have regular meetings. You're kind of, a, you've signed up for some accountability. And, um, but that doesn't mean that the greater SIG that's associated with the cloud, like you still need people to participate. It's just that these people are kind of, they, they know their name is on the line for it. And if you want to talk to somebody who's got a voting thing, you can talk to that person and you know, okay, I, I have a framework here. So that's kind of the idea there, not necessarily to introduce more bureaucracy. And also the idea is that as we grow, some of the things that FESCO has been doing, FESCO is the Fedora Steering Committee, the Technical Steering Committee. Um, and the idea is that as we grow, because we continue, hope to continue to grow larger, that um, those meetings will not be you know, four-hour meetings every week because a lot of the uh, technical decision can be offloaded to these working groups. So hopefully it's a um, structure that's set up for growth. 
Um, the SIGs are still a thing, and all the other things, the other sub-projects in Fedora, the Fedora Packaging Committee, Design, QA, those are all still there. Uh, exactly you know, what their role is and how they fit into the project. Um, it may change a little bit, but um, it's going to change as part of a community conversation. Nobody is saying we're disbanding. You know, as frustrated as people may get with some of the groups here, nobody is saying we're disbanding you, go away. We still value all these contributions, and they all have a really good uh, part to play in Fedora. Um, so here's the current state of these things. Each of the products produce something that we call a PRD. A PRD is like a business term product requirements document. And these are, since we don't actually have a product to sell, it's not really quite as formal as all that. Um, but basically a description of here's you know, what we're trying to do with Fedora Cloud. Here's what we're trying to do with Fedora Server and Fedora Workstation. Uh, and so FESCO, the Engineering Steering Committee, has approved this. And it's right now waiting for a board rubber stamp on that because this is a pretty big direction and we wanted to make sure that we have you know the full uh, process of community involvement in making sure that we are doing the, going the right way in this sort of thing and after that and starting right now and actually um, due sometime by the end of the month is a list of here are the things that each of these products you know, wants as changes from Fedora here's how we're going to do things differently and so we're kind of in a roadmap building phase right now. We're going to need to have a roadmap for this. We don't really have a roadmap. The Fedora 21 schedule is kind of hanging in the air as we wait to hear what's going to happen here. So that next step is planning. Um, and again, this is like a great place for input from anybody into things you'd like to see, things you think should be pushed for further out. Let's talk about that and figure out how that's going to go next. Um, so those are the, those specific things, sort of the environments and stacks and the products are kind of the two of the concrete things that are obvious if, what's part of Fedora Next. Um, there, there's more things that I kind of include under this umbrella. Um, not everything needs to have my brand attached to it, but uh, I kind of uh, want to say everything that's you know, in the future of Fedora, that's what we're talking about when we say Fedora Next. It's not really just these specific little ideas. It's kind of the big direction setting. And so there's some things that are important to this. Um, automation everywhere. Um, we, we really have very little in QA and release engineering. And in order to, to deliver three separate products, in order to address those needs beyond the products, we really need to step up the automation that we have. So there's a thing called Taskatron, which is built around BuildBot for doing QA automation. Um, that's getting some work. Tim Flink and some other people are working on that. Um, and uh, there's a talk Dennis Gilmore is having about automation in release engineering. That's sometime today. Um, people should go to that because it's really important, and we need to get that out of being things that are run by hand in kind of a scary way uh, so, that, so that we can have um, the future of Fedora. It's really important. Um, HyperKitty, uh, we've got it. Uh, I think we have some communication issues in Fedora. Um, it works fairly well a lot of the time, but we have a lot of um, separate areas where they don't really talk together very well. And the Fedora Devel list has always been full of a lot of noise and hard to get the signal out. So HyperKitty is a web-based interface to the mailing lists. Again, it's additive. It doesn't take away the mailing lists, but it lets you uh, interface with them in kind of a modern way rather than the old way. Again, if you like the old way, cool. Still there. But um, this might provide a prettier interface to it and with a lot more features that we can't do with mailing lists. Uh, I have this idea that uh, Ralph calls, uh, Ralph Bean calls a Fedora front page, um, which is basically an aggregator of everything that's important in Fedora right now, kind of a stream of content right now. If you go to fedoraproject.org, it's a very pretty front page, um, but um, Fedora contributors probably never look at it, and Fedora users might look at it a couple times, oh, here's a nice brochure, but then it's not used again. It was kind of designed to be a brochure site. It does that nicely. But I think we need something that's kind of an active center. And you know, the internet these days is centered around the web. So moving our active center out of being mailing lists and IRC onto a web page, I think, would be nice. Um, uh, another part's copers. Basically, this is uh, a personal repos that anybody can build with very low restrictions. You can just have your own repo. It's a pretty cool project. Um, and that's getting really close to production ready state. Um, there's some mailing list talk like today and yesterday about, OK, is it ready to say it's production? Um, so that'll be, that'll be interesting to see. And um, Fedora Ugly 
is a name for something that people, <laughs> I've been talking to people here at DevCon well, more than anything else, an idea for things to move from Copers towards the Fedora distribution um, where they're integrated together in a way that Copers aren't, um, but yet not having to climb the high wall that is getting into Fedora distribution proper. Um, and so it's a, a practical way to do that thing I was talking about where we can have uh, packages that aren't ready, but we still include them in Fedora and make them better while they're part of Fedora, rather than saying you can't play with us until you're perfect, which is really our current approach. Um, Epic is Robin Bergeron's idea that um, for, a propo for a repo that's somewhere between Apple, its long year, 10, life, 10 year lifespan, you know, RHEL matching lifespan, and Fedora's fast moving things. Um, I don't know what the current state of that proposal is, but I think it's an interesting idea. Well, it's uh, extra packages for enterprises and cloud, I think is the acronym there, but I, it's obviously to make a cool name. It's really good. And another thing that I really would like to see that um, if anybody wants to show up and hack on this, this would be awesome. Um, our wiki is uh, a tool that's used for a whole bunch of different things. A lot of it is process, a lot of it, you know, uh, guidelines for Fedora developers. And uh, mixed in with there, there's some user documentation. But if you want to find user documentation about Fedora, uh, good luck finding it in the wiki. Somebody's going to have to send you a direct link to it. And then if you kind of click on some link and you go outside of the page that was maintained, you are in crazy land. And you could land on anything and you know incorrect information from like six years ago that's still there. Nobody's maintained the page. It's a big mess. And it's really kind of a barrier to you start, OK, I'm going to start contributing, cleaning this up. Oh, my goodness, it's overwhelming. So I think sort of a new separate site that is just meant for lightweight user documentation. The Fedora, the other side of this, by the way, so the Fedora Docs project is also excellent. I know probably some of the people here work on that. Um, but it is almost like book level documentation. It's very high quality, but it's also done you know, through a pretty heavyweight release process. and. If you want to contribute to the Fedora documentation there, you kind of are committing to joining a project um, that is, has its own process and culture and things like that. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if you just wanted to throw up a quick how-to, um, Fedora docs isn't really equipped to accommodate that. So we don't really have a good place for this. And I know some people in the Fedora docs project have some ideas. So if you have those ideas, um, you can talk to me about it, but probably better to talk to the Fedora documentation team because there's ideas for how we could do something like this. Um, and yeah, so uh, following this, we'll have a panel discussion with, we have a bunch of people who are the liaisons for the, uh, I spelled the word right, awesome, um, <laughs> for the uh, Fedora, the working groups. Um, that's me, uh, Matthew Miller for the cloud, um, and Steve Gallagher is here. Josh Boyer, uh, Phil, where's Phil? There, uh, and Marcella. Everybody basically in the front except for Phil who went and hid back there. I don't know if y'all are that. Um, so um, I, I'm basically done with this. I can take individual questions, but I think it might be better to invite everybody else up for questions as well. Um, let's do any, any quick individual questions on this specifically? Yes. Yes, can we rename Fedora Ugly to Fedora Incubator? Yeah. Possibly, yes we can. That's just a, a name that I threw up there. Um, but part of the reason, you know, Fedora Incubator, Fedora Staging, all of those things, um, sort of the answer to it depends on exactly where we want to position it in terms of how important it is and how quickly things that are put there should move into the base distribution. Because there are some things that um, might never be able to get into the base distribution. They're open source, but they're packaged from upstream in a way that is actively hostile to the way we package things in Fedora. Um, Chromium, I'm looking at you. Um, and so those things, it might, it might actually be a little bit dishonest to say we're putting it in Fedora Incubator, it's incubating. How long is it going to be incubating? Uh, yeah, heat death of the universe, somewhere around then. Um, so that, that's why I put ugly there. But you know, maybe there's room for ugly and an incubator as separate things. It's not really a very fleshed out idea. It's just an idea. That, so, yeah. yeah, so possibly things that can, yeah, so if, if we name it incubator or uh, staging, something like that, then it might have the implication that things that 
aren't ever going to be in, in the Fedora distribution proper should just stay in Copers, and that might be okay. That might be the answer. The Fedora Ugly thing? Or, no. The, yeah, uh, how does that relate to individual timelines for things? Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, right now, um, the release, the idea is that we're going to stay everything on the same release cadence for now, and then we'll look at breaking that up in future uh, Fedora releases, you know, after Fedora 21. And we'll have to talk about, you know, what exactly we gain from that, what we lose from it, and how we can do it differently. And, you know, the, and then once we have kind of consensus on what we want, then we can figure out when we want to do it. And I don't think we quite know what we want yet. It just seems like, it seems to some of us like it might be a good idea, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, do the three parts share the same packages? Um, I have five minutes left here. Okay, go. Uh, they, they definitely, uh, the goal is for them to share the same ver base design, and um, at least for a Fedora 21 thing, they're almost certainly going to, s to come out of the exact same package set. It might be that in the future we want to, um, that they'll be able to like override and say I've got you know, share the packages, but oh I also have I needed a newer version of this. But if I if I um, update something in GNOME, we know that this will break XFCE, so we're going to put it just in the uh, in the Fedora workstation thing. If that happens to be GNOME based, we'll see that hasn't actually been decided yet. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, that's, an, uh, that's an unanswered question yet at this point, but I, um, that's also one of the things we want to do really carefully because we don't want to break things, and what we have does work pretty well. It has a lot of benefits for people. Let me repeat. Let me repeat his comment for the microphone first, which is uh, that uh, we basically are working under the assumption that it would be a bad thing to completely fork things off, and that it would be better to have, if if it's needed, to have sub packages that um, provide different configurations um, rather than rather than forking things completely. Yeah, um, and I think that's probably the case. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. So the comment was that this is pretty scary, and maybe it would be better to make that a hard rule. Um, I'm, I'm certainly open to that, uh, but I am not in any position to declare that from the podium here because it's. <laughs> Right. We also don't have any other way to do anything except for that right now. So, um, yeah. Again, for the mic, Josh's comment is that uh, we, he doesn't want to make rules uh, just to prevent um, 
I know, I've lost it. Um, that uh, nobody seems to be asking for that right now, so making a rule um, just to prevent something that sounds scary uh, may be premature, even if it really does sound scary, and I think we all agree that it sounds scary. Uh, and I want to say, add on top of that again, uh, the, the inertia is in favor of not doing that because of the way the infrastructure is. So anybody who wants to do something scary there is going to have to come up with a proposal and a plan for doing the scary thing. So, so the default for everything is it's the way it is. And so changing it takes the work and that's fine. And that, I think that by itself makes a, an, a natural barrier to things. Um, I'm freaking out the timekeeping people here. I keep getting signs flashed up at me, so it's uh, time to go on to the next thing in which I will just stay up here, but um, I don't know. We only have the one mic. Do we have more mics? One more mic. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we can pass this one around or just yell. I don't know if we... Um, I think uh, the idea was, yes, Steve's putting up an ether pad here, so I think maybe we'll have a non-miked conversation, and then um, the results of it will be captured on the ether pad for people who can't be here, and that way people who are here, um, we can talk without having... <laughs> <laughs> Quick, somebody make a, Earl, a shortened URL for this. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Okay, uh, so with that, I'm going to turn off the mic, and then we'll just yell from here on. <laughs>